Book 16, Father and Son. And then Athena told Odysseus, Odysseus, great strategist, it is time for your son to know the truth. Together you have to plot how you will kill the suitors. Then both of you go into town. I will join you there soon myself. Indeed, I am itching to fight. And then Athena touched him with a golden wand and dressed him up in fine cloak and tunic. And she made him taller and younger looking. He became tanned and his cheeks fell out and on his chin, the beard grew dark. And so her work was done and off she flew. Odysseus went in. His son was startled and looked down, afraid in case it was a god. His words flew out. Stranger, you look so different from before. Your clothes, your skin. I think you must be some god descended from the sky. Be kind to us and we will sacrifice and give you golden treasures. Pity us. Long-suffering Odysseus replied, I am no god. Why would you think such things? I am your father. That same man you mourn. It is because of me those brutal men are hurting you so badly. Then he kissed his son and cried, tears pouring down his cheeks. He had been holding back till then. The boy did not yet trust it really was his father and said, No, you are not Odysseus, my father. Some god must have cast a spell to cause me further pain. No mortal man could manage such a thing by, or by his own wits becoming old and young again unless some god appeared and did it all with ease. You certainly were old just now and wearing those dirty rags. Now you look like a god. Artful Odysseus said sharply, No, Telemachus, you should not be surprised to see your father. It is me. No other man is on his way. I am Odysseus. I suffered terribly and I was lost. But after 20 years, I have come home. As for the way I look, Athena did it. The goddess can transform me as she likes. Sometimes a homeless beggar. Then she makes me look like a young man wearing princely clothes. For heavenly gods, it is not difficult to make a mortal beautiful or ugly. With that, he sat back down. Telemachus hurled his arms around his father and he wept. They both felt deep desire for lamentation and wailed with cries as shrill as birds, like eagles or vultures when the hunters have deprived them of fledglings who have not yet learned to fly.